Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran to the no man. Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at the very first European cruiser in the game. And uh, Terry, why is this thing having such a weird camo on it? We'll get to that later. This is the Ellie. Uh, despite the fact, uh, wargaming, despite the fact that it once again is flying an Austro-Hungarian flag, no, this is, a, this is actually a Greek cruiser, but you wouldn't know until you go and look it up. She did start her life as the Eugenio de Savoia, a condottiere class light cruiser, more specifically of the uh, Duca d'Alsta subclass in the Italian Navy. And as such, she was busy already in the Spanish Civil War, then later in the, in the Second World War, and after the war she was handed over to the Greek as war reparation, where she was integrated into the Hellenic Navy. And then continued there as uh, in active duty until 1965, at which point she was converted, I think, into a prison ship. And then, then she was uh, sold off for scrap in the 1970s. But uh, the very first Greek and as such European cruiser in the game. So I was naturally curious to see what actually was going on with the ship. Let's have a very brief look at the details. Nothing special here. No new ship skills or anything. Uh, we've got stock standard things like a sonar and a precise aiming. But given that this is in fact a Duca d'Osta uh, sister ship, we're going to compare her to the Duca because the Duca actually exists as a premium on the Italian line. So let's have a quick look and see how these two match up. Uh, first things first, uh, the Ellie gains the precise aim whereas the Duca only gets the uh, gets the, uh, the sonar and obviously does not get semi-armor piercing. She has, for all intents and purposes, the same hole with a relatively comparable maneuverability where it gets kind of interesting other guns. And this is really the main difference, one of the two main differences between the two ships. Because the guns on the Ellie are good. Uh, honestly, we're going to have to look at another ship later, but the guns are really good. Uh, because what they've done here is they've given her high explosive damage but they've shifted the semi-armor piercing damage over to the armor piercing. Now this is 150 millimeter semi-armor piercing. It's not great. The penetration of, of the semi-armor piercing on the 150s is really nothing to write home about. But as 150 millimeter armor piercing, that is a different story altogether. 656 points of alpha damage on that is quite impressive, plus uh, a 4% fire chance. We have to pay though with a 0.2 second slower reload, but we're getting a little bit of a better range in the, in the bargain. This is where the good stuff ends, because the torpedoes are completely atrocious. Uh, somebody looked at the German cruisers and thought, that's a good torpedo range, and then they looked at the European destroyers and said, that's a good torpedo damage, and put, to put both things together. So these are hilariously bad torpedoes. You get two triple launchers, they have a slower reload than on the Duca, they only do 2,000 points of alpha damage, and they have a 5.4 kilometer range. They are relatively quick, but at a 5.4 kilometer range, it doesn't matter because at that, if, if you manage to torpedo anything on that range, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in trouble either way around. So no, these are atrociously bad torpedoes. Uh, the AA honestly doesn't matter, and the concealment is the same. Now there's one more ship that I want to throw in the mix here, because that is a ship that I am very much fond of, and that is the Nürnberg. 
There are multiple variants of that thing at this point, but uh, now let's look at the original one. Because the Nuremberg gets the same loadout as the Ellie. The Nuremberg gets a similar hull and similar maneuverability. The Nuremberg has a very good armor piercing. Very, very good armor piercing. But with, even though she gets nine guns, she has a one second slower base reload, shorter range, and actually less damage, alpha damage on the armor piercing. So this is, for all intents and purposes, a very, very dangerous armor piercing ship, the, the Ellie. And yeah, that's where the torpedoes come in, because the torpedoes on the Nuremberg are significantly better than on the Ellie. They've taken all the worst values from the Nuremberg's torpedoes and combined it with all the worst values of the European torpedoes. So, no, not the flooding chance. <laughs> not not the range they've given us they've given us the speed but the low damage and the flooding chance of a, of, a, of a, and the range of a german cruiser that is frighteningly terrifying anyway so these things aside uh, what does that leave us with is this a good ship is it worth it uh, how does it come out i have not the slightest idea i i, I lose track of these things so uh, you'll figure it out eventually, but much more importantly, Terry, why is there this weird camouflage on it? Okay, okay, I'm not going to torture you any longer. You get the choice between two camos. You can get the historical camouflage, which is... Um, let me just put the non-camouflage on, right? This is the ship without a camo. It's grey, as it should be. This is the historical camo. It's a slight shade darker grey bit bluish maybe i mean to be fair the ocean is blue <laughs> and it still looks better than the than the alternative but um oh, it's it's a decidedly unimaginative camo anyway uh, the historical camo gives us hit points range on the main battery which is great large caliber aa range which is completely useless and torpedo damage reduction which is utterly unimportant on this ship the trireme i see what you did there <laughs> because it's a greek ship wouldn't have guessed that from the flag war gaming. Wouldn't have guessed that, uh, and it, I, it could have been Roman for all I cared. So, I mean, it came out of Italy, so this sort of works both ways, I guess. But either way, uh, this one gives us hit points, range, torpedo speed, and max ship speed. So usually, even though even if the alternate camos are a little bit better than the historical ones, I tend to go with the historical ones. But in this case, the historical camo is just so atrociously bad that I can't recommend in good faith anyone getting it. Uh, but get your hands on the alternate camo if you can. And that's why we're looking. That's why she's looking like that. Ah, let's put it back. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that's why we're looking at it that way. Uh, equipment. You don't really have an awful lot of choices here. You can go with the main battery mod 1. I personally go for the reload, uh, the same build that I have on my Nuremberg. And uh, second slot is in proportion to nobody's great surprise. Third slot in the Nuremberg, I do sail with the steering. I, I am building this one for concealment, just because the um, tier 6 isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Tier 6 has gotten harder. I might have to build my Nuremberg for concealment as well if that's available. So uh, that with that setting, we are getting ourselves to a max speed of 38 knots, and that's before supplies, so over 38 knots if you, with the right supplies. Uh, we got the guns down to a 6.6 .6 second reload with an over 12 kilometer range. And yeah, we're not looking at the torpedoes, but we've got the surface detection down to 6.8 kilometers. This is a very, very scary proposal if you run across it in a destroyer. Now, the only commander I have from the European line is not actually of any use for this one. So I've just used the regular commander and um, I'm getting myself addition an additional sonar and building it for sonar because one of the things that the ship does really well is destroyer hunting. I am getting also an additional precise aim and go with marksman skill, but other than that, there's no great surprise really. Uh, to, to be really fair, the level 12 skill absolutely doesn't matter because it's a light cruiser, it doesn't have any armor, so you can't buff the, the deck armor because what's not there can't be buffed. Uh, the torpedoes are such utter garbage that butting, buffing the torpedoes doesn't matter either. And these are 150mm guns, they don't do much damage on Citadel hits, so that doesn't matter in a way either. But obviously the one you want is the APCS, because these, the armor piercing on these guns is very, very nice indeed. That is not to say that you have to neglect the high explosive if you're firing at battleships at long range. And unlike the Nuremberg, you actually have a ship that has a um, 
that that hasn't been that hasn't been created on a uh, uh, on on a coaster under a beer mug by a drunk German because it actually has the the, the guns in a somewhat sensible layout two turrets forward two turrets aft not like the Nuremberg which effectively needs to sail in reverse to uh, <laughs> to be able to use her guns effectively <laughs> uh, I love the Nuremberg regardless but anyway um, Ellie there we go that's the thing. Anything else we need to say about the ship? I don't think so. So two games, one with premium everything historical camel. Well, not historical camel. The blue, blue, blue little eagle camel. What is that? A duck? An owl? It's an owl, isn't it? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a significance about that. But um, anyway, I'm going to call it a chicken. Uh, so the chicken camel or the historical... Uh, uh, but that's in the second game. In the first game, we're going to get the regular stuff, how you would set it up. So, let's get into some gameplay with the Ellie and see if this ship is worth it, because it does have some competition around this tier. The first round is on a Bay of Storms, and we are facing a New Mexico, Queen Elizabeth, a Gokasa, an Alba, and an Icarus. Now, in mid-tier, on Bay of Storms, you are going to be looking at base traits, especially if it's a 5v5, so I can't harm to go for it. The thing with the Ellie is that that thing is proper quick. Uh, she can outrun some of the destroyers at the tier. So um, the torpedo angles are great, but uh, don't be don't be tempted to thinking that this is a torpedo boat. It isn't. <laughs> and as you can see, the turrets are a little bit on the sluggish side. So if you want to go for the uh, turret traverse module instead of the reload, that's also vi uh, valid. I haven't had problems with getting my turret shot off massively. They're relatively small and uh, seem to hold up pretty well but uh, yeah if you want to go for traverse that's also valid new mexico is kind of going wide but isn't going uh fubuki is is scouting the flank so we should know what's coming down here and uh just making sure i don't run into it but the range i mean without the historical camel of the the a historical camel is uh, just under 12 kilometers but uh, it's still it's still a decent range from where you can unload and the, the reason i'm leaving the he on for now is that i'm probably going to be shooting at that battleship over there before i get a, i get to even spot anything else because that new mexico is already almost in range there we go new mexico's in range uh, precise aim up and we start a we start a g spamming now with it's a four it's a four percent fire rate and they only eight guns but they reload pretty quickly and as you can see they are really reasonably precise so you can usually get a fair amount on target oh, okay icarus spotted that warrants the armor piercing and uh so now up just to see any incoming torpedoes there they come uh, easy to, uh, easy dodge because what you can see coming <laughs> isn't going to hit you. And uh, now Icarus is out of torpedoes. And with these guns and the armor piercing loaded, that is a very, very dead Icarus in a very short amount of time if he doesn't pay any attention and gets the heck out of here. Now we have spotted the Gokasa, who is has not actually controlled. Actually, nobody's been pushing the flank. Icarus has been pushing the flank alone, which makes me wonder what he was trying to achieve here, because um, you're pushing into a destroyer, a, cru a light cruiser and a battleship without any backup from your side, because the rest of your team is hunkering down in your capture circle then and pushing the other flank. Um, well, it's now a dead Icarus. So back to setting things on fire. Where was that, that battleship go? Um, well, we just got the Gokasa spotted. We might as well shoot at that thing. It's actually better to start you uh, start using the uh, the armor piercing, but the high explosive penetration isn't terrible either. So you can actually score uh, score a decent amount of full penetrations with the, even with the high explosive on on an enemy light cruiser. And like I said, these are um, these are 150, so they, they only get 150% armor piercing uh, um, citadel in a bonus. So it's not an awful lot. But uh, Gokase does have long-range torpedoes, so we do need to uh, do need to go. We do need to go wide because uh, she is uh, in range, and we don't have the sonar ready. So, but Gokase doesn't want to play on this side, so they're rather rather push, pushing the other side of the flank. And uh, unfortunately, they're not going for the capture circle. They're all going for the kills, which leaves the three of us here. And I'm just asking my team to casually, uh, Fubuki, would you mind? <laughs> and Fubuki says, sure. <laughs> cup is wide open and they're all running away <laughs> so yeah well, let's make ourselves useful okay queen elizabeth is defensive but is now in what we technically call a crossfire um the uh, somewhat untechnical um 
plastic. The somewhat untechnical term for it is proper screwed. So uh, sonar up just in case there are any Gokase torpedoes in the water. And uh, we'll just try to set the Queen Elizabeth on fire while we are taking on their capture circle. And since they have not made any move towards the friendly capture circle, the only chance they have now, even though they're kill ahead, is to actually go and, you know, do something about it. And the Gokas has got the right idea. He's gone undetected and is coming back around. But the battleships are um, less than uh, keen. And while they have managed to, uh, to push through, we've just pulled the kill back and here comes the Gokase. So back to the armor piercing. And you've just seen these high explosive full penetrations on the Queen Elizabeth, have you? Uh, hello Mr. Gokase. <laughs> this is going to hurt. Uh, obvious torpedoes coming around. Okay, torpedoes away. There are gonna be torpedoes, Gokase torpedoes in the water most likely, so I'm already turning around. But uh, if you give me broadside like that, HE, but oh, he, he actually dodged the torpedoes. I was switching back to the AG, uh, thinking that he wouldn't be dodging those. See, uh, this is what I mean with this torpedo speed thing. It doesn't help you. If somebody knows how to dodge torpedoes, they're dodging them, they're dodging them anyway. If they don't know, then uh, they'll take them anyway. So, anyway. Uh, that takes care of the Gokase, which means that uh, my Fubuki in the capture circle is safe. And uh, we're actually even winning on points at this stage. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, hello Alba, uh, you're 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 a bit late to the party, but uh, sure, come on in. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll just be ca taking your capture circle in the meantime. Uh, I know that he doesn't have any he doesn't have any angles this far. It's more like is he dropping on the side? Now he has to do dodge uh, Fubuki torpedoes, give me a perfect broadside. But before we can do anything about it, the battle actually ends, and the New Mexico takes the win. So uh, the Ellie is not a uh, a ship in which you rack up a massive amount of damage unless you get exceedingly lucky but uh, she can still hold her own pretty well and uh, we still managed to get sec come, come in second in the team and as you can see the even the HE shells are nothing to sneeze at which brings us to round two in which we face uh, tier sevens mostly in a golden channel center control everybody's favorite map against Renown 44, that is probably a loner, given that it's sailing without camel, uh, King George, a Fuso, Brooklyn, and a Kirkdoin, and uh, two bots. So most of the, de all the destroyers uh, are, are bots in this game. So it's more come, gonna come down to the cruisers and the battleships when it comes to capture control. And uh, we do have a Belfast which has, which, with us, which is an excellent tier seven cruiser. So I think uh, that probably works out, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll rush the capture circle, and while the bots are just going to sail straight ahead. Again, uh, this is the alley with the, with, with the chicken camo. <laughs> so we've got a golden chicken on the front. Uh, this is the alley with the chicken camo, and uh, we'll be making 39.1 knots. <laughs> yep. <laughs> This thing can outrun, can outrun destroyers at this tier, and she has an under seven kilometer surface detection. Uh, this is one, of, and actually, by the way, extremely good forward angles on the guns as well. If you see that, uh, these are. Uh, this is a nightmare waiting to happen if you're in a destroyer and you see one of those things coming at you. <laughs> it's got sonar, <laughs> it's got nasty armor piercing, uh, and uh, I mean the torpedoes are crap, but uh, it still has some, so you can't even rush it if you're trying. Anyway, uh, there are some bots, and uh, I'm not so interested in the bots. Uh, there's a Kirkdoin, which is a light cruiser, so we're going to switch over to the armor piercing and uh, make good use of our long range that we have here. Although, so far, uh, it looks like the other cruiser is not in the... Yeah, our, our, our Belfast is not making his way into the capture circle, uh, which is mildly unfortunate, but he has smoke screen. He has a smoke screen, so that's, that is a good flanking position that he's in. So I'm not going to be too critical. But uh, Kirkton, if you just want to sit there, I'm, I'm down for that. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to just unload at you. But so far, the enemy team is holding the capture circle, but we are now pulling it back. I think the Belfast has backed away into the capture circle as well. And uh, the battleships have made their way here too, so things are looking up. And we can probably start becoming a little bit more aggressive here. There is a Brooklyn as well, but is outside the capture circle. We're now in control of the cup. We are kill ahead. And the enemy team is, if you see the enemy battleships, they are doing their very best to 
avoid getting into the capture circle. Uh, this is something you see unfortunately quite a bit on this map. It's down then to the cruisers, <laughs> to, or the dis uh, if, since the destroyers are all bots, it's down to the cruisers to try and make something happen. Now Brooklyn is nasty. If Brooklyn was firing armor piercing at me, I would be in real trouble. Unfor uh, for fortunately for me, and unfortunately for him, uh, he's deciding to just fire high explosive the whole battle. So uh, we can sitting in, sit in the capture circle, uh, ignore probably the cruisers out there because they have other things to shoot at, and see if we can set maybe a fire like that on the King George. Damage controls the single fire. And now uh, we wait for the Damacon to get off cooldown and see if we can uh, if we can set another fire, maybe get some torpedoes off, but uh, clear that flank so our battleships don't have to cower in fear on this side of the map. Where's that King George going? Uh, is he going the other way around? Oh, he's going into the capture circle. Well, that's unfortunate. And uh, let's... Uh, I didn't think I wanted to press the sonar here. <laughs> that was probably a misclick. Uh, let's get back to the armor piercing because we're fighting this thing at point blank range. So uh, uh, every, everybody is now outside the capture circle. We have lost both of our destroyers, and uh, the enemy cruisers have taken the capture circle. I did want to get that King George. I was expecting him to go all the way around. So uh, let's aim at the stern section because he's already merrily burning, and just do as much damage as we can. Uh, it's very tempting to just uh, try to go for the torpedo drop, but honestly, it's not usually worth it. That, however, is a Brooklyn and a Kirkdine shooting at me. So that double fire I will control. kirkdine has got the sonar up, so I'm not even going to bother with the torpedoes, honestly. First of all, I'm out of range anyway. And again, if the Brooklyn was firing armor piercing, which he now is, I'd be in really big trouble, yes. So I do need to get out of here, because that Brooklyn has just learned that he can use armor piercing, and that is a bad thing. Yep, I do need to get away from here, from these two. Uh, let's get uh, as much damage as we can against the Kirktoin and then uh, hopefully the battleships can make themselves useful and actually f and maybe the Belfast even can find his way back into the capture circle. But yeah, as you can see, uh, very very nice armor piercing and if Brooklyn had stuck with HE I might have, uh, I might have stayed and uh, just taken him down. But I've done my part, I'm down to 2000 hit points and uh, I will be... yeah yeah, Kirktoin is still sending aircraft. Uh, I will be uh, just farming a bit of damage and leaving it to the rest of my team, which has now made their way into the capture circle at last. So, uh, yes, you go capture the car target area. I've been in there the whole game. <laughs> I'm going to go go and farm some damage on that Fuso. So, um, there's about, something's about to happen here, which uh, I found quite hilarious. Uh, you, you see it in a minute when it happens. For now, I'm just uh, my, being mindful of my hit points that I am a one-shot kill for that Fuso and uh, see if he gets annoyed enough that he's trying to shoot at me. So let's... Uh, we can recover a bit of health. Heals. Yeah, Fuso is still not shooting at me. And, uh, I'm just trying to set a fire. But uh, in all honesty, I could probably have just used the armor piercing as well. If I had a precise aim, uh, might have might have made more sense here, really. Um, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just annoying that Fuso from over here. Uh, sailing at half speed. And uh, seeing if I can tickle him into... Uh, there he comes. Okay, now Fuso is shooting at me, so now we need to dodge. And... yep, this is fine. And we are still uh, kiting away from the Fuso, because by now the two battleships that are nowhere near the capture circle, by the way, uh, are completely uh, engrossed with everything that isn't the capture circle. <laughs> and are just sailing around. And there comes the next salvo from the Fuso. And this is fine, 777 more hit points than I need. Now the thing is, I am having a relatively good concealment, but I'm now unspotted. Now, I am outside gun range, obviously. What I can do, however, is make sure that I am staying without I'm staying outside spotting range and shooting at spots that the Fuso is sailing into. So do notice the absence of the little yellow triangle. I am un I am unspotted. I am still kiting away and opening up the distance from the Fuso. But I can send I can't lock it on, but I can still hit the Fuso. <laughs> so he's currently being HE spammed by a cruiser in open water that he cannot see. And that I found hilarious. <laughs> and now he's dead. Uh, so, the... <laughs> Apologies. Uh, that was just too much fun. Uh, the Ellie. Is it a... Um, it's a good tier 6 cruiser. It's a good tier 6 light cruiser. It's all about the guns. Uh, she has 
very good armor piercing and actually pretty good high explosive shells as well. Uh, she is a huge threat due to her speed and concealment to enemy destroyers and with the sonar. When it comes to just absolute damage output, um, you're not going to be doing massive damage numbers. There are a couple of other ships that can do that better at the tier. Uh, ships that have more, have more torpedoes or torpedoes that actually do some damage or torpedoes that actually set some floods or similar things. But for a tier 6 light cruiser, uh, she's not a bad one. Uh, it's definitely a very, very good little destroyer hunter and it's just so much fun to play. So if you enjoy tier 6 light cruisers uh, and you're happy, with, uh, you're happy with, with using guns and you don't want to rely on your torpedoes, then this is absolutely a fun ship to play. It's not the best in class, but it's a really nice light cruiser and hopefully at some point Wargaming also fixes the, uh, the, the national flag to the Greek one. But um, uh, definitely, you need the uh, you need the a historical camo uh, to for it in, in order for it to shine because that with the buff to uh, buff to range and the buff to speed is just such a you, you could build the ship for speed and you could do over forty knots in a light cruiser <laughs> at tier six and that is just that is just amazing so uh, definitely a pretty unique ship uh, a very fun light cruiser and well worth it if you are into this type of ship in my opinion and that's it for me today thanks everybody and i will see you next time bye bye